Hi, I'm Katie, and this is episode 69 of Ornamentations, and today I have a great deal to share with you. I have a start, I have a finish, I have a lot of whip progress. I have been stitching, 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 stitching to, I think, great results, and I'm really excited. Can you tell that I'm excited? I also have my haul from market to share with you. So let's get started. It's a beautiful spring day here in Northern California and I love the coming of spring as a time of year because I don't, everything feels possible. Does anybody else feel that? There's something about the lengthening days, all the light after, you know, the dark days of winter. I mean, the literally dark, you know, when it's night at 4.30 p.m. And the first leaves on the trees with their glorious color and plants shooting up from the ground. And it, oh, I just, I love this time of year. But <laughs> let's talk stitching. That's why we're here. So let's start today with my finish. And that is something that was almost done when I saw you last. And this is the coming kit plum street samplers chocolate hearts so i was pretty close last time and i'm happy to report that i am now done i hope to ffo this before i see you last and the major change i made here was making both stags the dark brown instead of two different colors, but I did make one other change as well. There was supposed to be a little angel figure right here. I replaced that with another flower, but that would have made this side all red and I wanted there to be some light pink so that there would be visual balance between the sides. So here I made all of the flower elements pink instead of red as they're charred in and as I've stitched on the other side. But I think that works. This is quite dense, so you may not want to make the same change, but you've got all the threads to do whatever you want, pretty much. But for the most part, I stayed pretty true to the piece, exactly as Paulette charted it. Oh, it's glorious. Yeah, that says the magical coming of spring to me too. So I guess that's where the meditation on spring and new life and growing things came from, channeling Keats. But yeah, oh, isn't that beautiful? So this has been blocked. It's ready to FFO. I am hoping to try this out in the shaker box top so we'll see how it looks and I hope I'll be coming to you next time with an FFO showing off this glorious piece. These are threads. There are eight of them and as I've mentioned before this is a kit. Um, the lost materials will be coming quite soon. I've finished cutting all the linen, so I have tentatively, tentatively scheduled this and the not yet revealed Tiny Treasures Spring Kit for release on May 7th. I'll confirm that date on the next floss tube, and I'll also be revealing the Spring Tiny Treasures Kit at that time. I think you're going to like it. I'm really, really pleased with it. So that and chocolate hearts will be coming to you soon as i mentioned i finished cutting all the linen but my mom now has to iron it and <laughs> that's a big job so yep but it is coming and i'm very excited to share this with you because oh, is that gorgeous or what it's just it's i love it i've enthused about this one before so i'll leave off but uh let, so before I get to my other stitching, because there is a lot of it, let's talk market because that happened and all of the charts that I ordered came in and I'd like to share what I got with you. So we're going to be really heavy on Plum Street. I'm having a Plum Street moment. That's just a thing in my world and I did really love her releases. I could have bought all of them, honestly, but I tried to restrain myself there. Oh, 
have so much and you can't stitch all the things. There just isn't enough time. My heart is the pity. But the first thing I bought is actually Stacy Nash. And this is Bobbin, who is so sweet. I love mice. I think I've told stitchy mice especially. I think I've told this story before, but my brother's childhood nickname was Mouse, Mousy, or Mousin. When he was a very small child, he had a gray sweatshirt and sweatpants, I think from Costco, that he wore all the time. He called them his mouse furs, and he would crawl around on the floor and squeak as justification for never having to take them off because they were his favorite clothes. And the nickname stuck. So my mom and I both have a very soft spot for cute depictions of mouse, mice, mouse, mice, because it reminds me of my little brother who I love. He no longer gets down on the floor and squeaks, but he's a very entertaining and charming adult. So Bobbin, I actually love the entire Animal Crackers series and I would want all of them but as many of you know I have a true hatred for block stitching so bobbin is just perfection tiny adorable mouse and that's a level of block stitching I can deal with so bobbin looks like I'm feeling story time today are you guys ready settle in with your stitching because it looks like I am chatty and then Plum Street. Oh, Plum Street. So these were my two favorite of her releases. And those were stars. Big Red Barn. You know, I did not keep this happy morning for myself. And I had originally selected that as something that would be a companion to my stitch of, I think this is Summer Hill, also by Plum Street. I took out the main figure and just replaced it. I love these quilt star flowery thingies. I don't know, I just adore them. So I'll link my conversion to this in the episode description. Oh, but aren't those perfect display friends? And then I could stitch my own barn to go with it. So stars, definitely gonna stitch. I, one of these will be next year's summer floss tube kit, so don't quote me on which one, but at the moment I'm actually leaning towards this, which is Flag Thief, because when I first saw the image, I thought this was going to be huge. I was like, no, I don't have more dang grass in me, but it's not. The stitch count is 123 by 109, which is totally doable. So I'm thinking Flag Thief might be the perfect summer floss tube kit for next year. We could get a really good red, some more greens. Wouldn't that be fabulous? So I definitely want to stitch both of these. Um, one conversion will be shared, one will be a floss tube kit, and I can display them all together with my previous Plum Street. I think that's going to be great. I'm really excited. Those were just amazing. And I, it was a really happy moment in my life when I looked at this stitch count on this. I was like, oh, yes, not as much grass as I thought. What a relief. I envy the people who find block stitching comforting and mindless happy stitching. I wish I did. I've gotten better at it since doing all the grass on this happy morning, but I still can't say that that's something that I really find relaxing. I do prefer the more intricate thinking, have to look at the chart every five seconds stitching, and honestly, sometimes I wish I didn't. But also from Plum Street was Nelson. So I had to get this. I'm not sure that I will actually stitch it, but I did stitch blue skin and loved it. So Nelson was one that I absolutely had to have whether I stitch it or not. The conversion for this has been shared. I'll link it in the description. I can't re recommend this piece highly enough. I loved it and I love Oh, just that design, those swooping branches. This is like the composition on this is so well done. Love it. 
And then I was asked if I were going to stitch Nelson, what would I do it on? Would I do it on Vermeer Blue so that these two matched? And my answer to that is actually no. Looking at this, so the reason I wouldn't do it on Vermeer Blue is one, the richer color of the horse. Okay, I'm gonna take this out of the bag because ooh, reflection in here is something crazy. So the richer color of the horse, one, and then two, that purple. I would not like that on Vermeer Blue. So my pick for Nelson would actually be the new Legacy Linen 37 count smoke signal. I think that would be perfect because the white of the blossoms would really pop, the horse would really pop, and those are some similar color profiles to what I use this for with um, Parson Brown, Not Forgotten Farms. Thought they worked great. And then you could use some nice smoky purples and those I think would also come alive. So I would highly recommend smoke signals. And that brings me to a related piece of haul, which I have a lot of swatches. I'm always ordering different fabric swatches to try and keep up with needs. And I was digging through them a couple weeks ago, looking for something else and came across my swatch of this and thought, Oh, I've seen that color before. It's a perfect backing match. I mean, obviously it's darker, but it's totally consistent with smoke signal. So if you would like a backing fabric for your smoke signal, it's from Mood Fabrics. It's their silk taffeta and latte, and their taffetas are wonderful backing fabrics. They are thinner than Duchess Silk Satin, but they are real silk. They handle quite well and they do make for lovely backing fabrics. So that was my only non-market haul to report was I bought half a yard, which is their minimum cut size. And I'll link that in the description because I didn't have a recommendation to share for Parson Brown on a backing fabric. I felt like I owed you one. And also I wanted that for my own use. So all of that is what I would do for Nelson, but no promises on actually stitching it myself. I mean, I do love it. If only there could be more than 24 hours in a day. Keep struggling with that. And then, oh, next. Fox and Rabbit and Harper, 1839. So this is a pretty sizable sampler. I'm not actually looking to stitch it as much as I love it, but the reason I bought it was this. I love that, those swirling stems, the mix of colors, the flowers. What that suggests to me is the side of a little round pin cushion, and then you could do the little parrot for the top as a perfect little stitchy accessory, perhaps to go in my sewing box. So, oh, I loved that. I actually love the whole thing. I think this was their um, previous exclusive for the Stitcher's Merchant Retreat that's now out, but, oh, look at that. Gorgeous. So that I actually am going to have to stitch, but modified as a small just because, like I said, not enough hours in the day. I wish there were enough hours in the day to stitch all of the things because goodness knows I want to. And then the last two things I got from Market were two late breaking offerings. I ordered these from Kitten Stitcher. The first was the 2024 Prairie Schooler Santa. Very scandy, I love it. Definitely gonna have to stitch that. And then, you know I had to get Pennsylvania Christmas 2 by Shakespeare's Peddler, the red and white. Oh, that is so striking, I love it, love it. Definitely going to stitch this for Christmas this year. So those are 
The charts I ordered from Market, I've really been enjoying seeing everybody else's picks. You know, that's one of the great things about Floss Stew and our stitching community is just the wide range of tastes and, you know, we can all love different things, but we're bound together by our love of stitching, if that doesn't sound too hopelessly cheesy. But that's actually what I think. That's a heartfelt sentiment. So, yeah. And then, oh, one other thing before I get to my whips, because I do have whip progress to share with you as well as a new start, and that's that I was reminded of pulling out some of my summer stitches to show you that I did a conversion for the attic of Brenda Gervais, my home sweet home last year, and promised to share it with you after they sold all their kits little belated on that but I do have the conversion for you it will be in the description for this episode and then I pulled all of the threads to show you oh, now is that a glorious silk palette or what Carolyn of the attic did stitch a model using this. I think she used Himalayan fog. So my two linen picks were legacy linen 38 count Himalayan fog or cloister cream. She used Himalayan fog. And if you go back on the attic's Instagram, there's a photo of her model stitch using my conversion and it's glorious because, oh, those are some stonker colors. Beautiful, beautiful silks. So my own sweet home special for you. And then let's get to the rest of my stitching. So I have a new start. Um, it's a very small start, but I did start as I promised scattered seed samplers, little berry thief pinky. This is such a cute little design. I can't wait to add it to my little strawberry bowl right behind me that I showed you a few episodes ago and this is my very wimpy little star yeah it's tiny but I did establish the color conversion which was really what I was looking to do so this is legacy linen 48 count march paint and I am using Swasserfine on it, even though it is 48 count. I know everybody else is using 103, but you know me and my weird ideas about coverage. I think that looks beautiful. So I'm unapologetically team Surfine for 48 count. And then this is the conversion plus one more color, Gobelins Blanc. So this is a great, very limited number of silks if you're looking for something small to try out. And then you would actually only need Blanc plus these four if you want to do it exactly as charted. I have added an extra light pink here. And I'm gonna asterisk this when I put this in the conversion because I haven't actually stitched with it yet. So I may change my mind here. But when I was looking at the photo of the chart, you've got these little flowers. And yes, I know strawberry flowers are white, but why be literal with your cross stitch when you can have flowers that really pop? And I thought a light pink might show better and have more visual impact to go with those luscious red strawberries. So I'm gonna try that. TBD if that's the exact right shade, but I do like the idea of adding a pink in there. So I will asterisk this color, which is 21, 22. One, because I haven't used it yet, and two, because that's an addition. You could stitch this as charted without it. Oh, spring allergies. Beautiful new leaves, growing things, longer days, and also lots of sniffling, which I try and keep off camera for everybody's sake. But uh, since Little Berry Thief is such a small and charming stitch, I might just come up with a finish for the next episode. We'll see. It, there's not a lot to it. I could definitely do it, but I am pretty engrossed with my big projects and that's what we'll look at now. So everybody prepare yourself for a super cheesy moment because 
What time is it? Three quarters past AKGIT. That's right, I am past the 75% mark and oh, so proud of myself that I think I'm probably emanating insufferable smug and I'm really sorry about that. It's not intentional. It's just when I look at this, it's so stunning. Is that not so stunning? Do you not love it? I love it. You're probably not still watching my channel if you don't think it's stunning because I know I just go on and on and on about it and it's been a pretty regular feature since I started it. So what's new here since I saw you last? That third lozenge as well as the letters on this side around it. And then I, from there I went down and stitched that bottom medallion, which is six of eight, as well as the little one on top in between those. So as I said, those are the stitching that I'm enjoying the least on this. So I've been trying to hop down and move the head on those. It would feel great to have those done and then just have the fun stitching as I power through to the end. So after I finish the fourth tree of life, which is where I am right now. I'm going to come back down to medallion number seven, lozenge number four, medallion number eight, and then from there it will be the fun stuff all the way to the end. I also finished spool number four of Sophine. I'm on to spool number five. Just as a necessary disclaimer, these are 100 meter spools not the 50, so it's the same size as a Golan's or 103 spool, but because those threads are thicker, you get 50 meters on a spool, even though it's the same size. So double the thread over 103 or Golan's. And I just like to caution anybody watching that yes, it looks like I am going to come out ahead of the recommended number of spools, but please do not play thread check-in with this. Yes, I will probably have ordered extra spools here, but on something this size, the peace of mind is truly, truly priceless. I regret nothing. I would do it again. So, oh my gosh, is that glorious or what? Obligatory shot of the back. Not as pretty as the back of the Brita Mart sampler. It's not reversible. I hadn't yet achieved full crazy when I started this, but it still looks pretty good. You know, there are no carries even on all those small and miserable letters at the bottom. Oh, that's the other great thing. I'm almost done with letters on this. That is exciting, exciting news. So, AKGIT, looking amazing. I'm obsessed. It's so hard to put this down, which is why I'm a little, I don't know, on Little Berry Thief. As adorable as that is, it's not nearly as all-encompassing as AKGIT is for me. So this is the chart. You can see where I am relative to the whole. And then I think since there's just a little bit of space here, I should be able to put the year in with small numbers right there because as we've discussed before, I put my own initials here instead of AKGIT and instead of trying to cram the year in there, I think it might actually be a more natural fit right there. And I really hope the year is going to say 2024. I'm in pretty good shape in that direction, but oh, you never know. <laughs> I've had plenty of plans before and thought I was in very good shape and had something derail them. So I really don't want to get ahead of myself there, but I'm looking, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling hopeful on that. But so AKGIT, I am hoping that I will be through the equivalent of page 16 of 20 for next time and that I can keep up a pretty good clip with that. I find that I, I'm 
weird. That's relaxing, winding down in the evening stitching for me. So I'm working on it consistently and putting in a fair amount of time. So I'm hopeful that I'm getting there. And then my other mega whip. So because this is now too much stitching for the frame, I should have taken this off the frame for today so that I could show you the whole thing. However, there's been a major development. The thread that I have been waiting for, the new Paris is in. I cannot wait to get started with this. So I, left it on the frame so that as soon as I am done uploading, editing, writing notes, I can start playing with my delightful new thread candy. So, Bread and Sampler, last time we saw this, I was just putting the internal border in on band five. I had just finished it and I do have progress on that front. Yeah. Okay. So you can actually see some of the distortion I've got right here. This is going to need to be blocked once I'm finished, but that I don't think is anything blocking can handle. And yeah, this is where I am. So a pretty good chunk of band five. I am hoping I can complete that for the next video. I've added that rose, which is satin stitched, the thistles, which are a mix of satin stitch and double running stitch. The stems and the detailing are fully filled in. And then I did the little grapes and their detailing on each side. Those are also in satin stitch. I love the rich color. So the satin stitch on the rose is actually going to be covered in the end. I am going to put layers of detached needle lace petals over it. However, that is strictly optional. So for everywhere that I will do needle lace on the Brittle Mart sampler, there is a counted option if you don't want to do it yourself. You could very easily just leave that really beautiful, rich satin stitching for the rose. Yes, there will be a center there. There's a reason that's not filled in yet. We'll talk about that another time, but let me get a little closer to the camera so I can hold this up properly. So there's always an option. I want to go all the way and do needle lace with this, but I know not everybody will want to. And so I am providing options so that you don't have to. I'm trying to get the camera to focus on some of those details and the thistles is really, really detailed and gorgeous, but it's struggling to focus a little bit. I think you can see some of the shine, not as well as that one time when it was pretty glorious, but ooh, ooh, oh, it looks so good. So you can't see the first band here. And then I've laid in a layer of mush muslin to cushion this as I roll it over the band. I'm not sure that's strictly necessary, but oh, you can't be too careful, right? Especially because the back of this is also a feature on my own version. Speaking of, that's status of the back on band number five. And that's the back, more generally. Looks pretty good. I'm really thrilled with this. I just, oh, I'm loving it. All that rich color. That's just glorious. So for next time, I am hoping to fill in all the missing elements on the second and third bands with the green since it's in. And then I really hope that we'll be looking at a finished fifth band as well. I do have some design decisions to make there. So what's missing from this right now, obviously, is the rest of the top border. There are leaves flanking the rows underneath, carnation, carnation. These are in reversible cross, um, satin stitch here, I think. 
and then there are two flowers and their accompanying stems filling in this bottom blank space. I've designed them, I've picked colors, you never quite know what you're going to get until you actually stitch it in terms of how the color balance looks. So we'll see, there may be some frogging, there usually is when I'm playing with color, but oh, I love, I love this rich pink. So why are the grapes pink? Grapes aren't pink. Yeah, there's no purple on the sampler and it distributes that bright pink in more evenly into the band. So that's why there are pink grapes. Also, because this is my sampler and I said so. That's why. But it looks great. So there will be needle lace that will be added on these two bands at the very end. But as I said, there are options being provided while I'm doing them myself. I've got the satin stitch under stitching that will be covered and that's an option if you don't want to do it and you want to stick with more familiar techniques. So. Oh, I honestly don't even know what to say other than that. I'm pleased. I hope you are enjoying watching the Bretta Mart sampler unfold as much as I am enjoying stitching it and sharing it with you, whether you want to stitch it or not. I I just love that balance of colors. Blue, pink, and green is something that I return to over and over as a theme in my embroidery and the different permutations you can get with it are always very interesting to me from a color standpoint. And I just, oh, I love the form of the band sampler. It is glorious. It's glorious. I just love it. Oh, satin stitch. Shine. Yeah, it's unfortunately the sun's coming out. It's not overcast today. I don't think you're really seeing the shine of the filament silk as well as has been on some other videos, but you can still see all that glorious rich color and detail. So that's the Brita Mart sampler. Uh, I plan to keep working like a cricket on this and I hope to have plenty of progress to show you next time as well because I am absolutely raring to go with my new toy now that it's here. So no extended literary analogies to accompany the Brita Mart sampler this time, which brings me to the close of this episode. A little shorter, but good. I hope there was content. And the last thing I have today is that the frame giveaway has not been claimed. Anne Gillum 9405, you have until April 7th to send me your mailing address and claim the scroll frame, or I will redraw in time for the next episode. So what's coming next time other than continued enthusiasm for AKGIT because, oh yeah, that's a real feature in my life. Hopefully more stitching on the Brita Mart sampler. We'll see the debut of the new green Soie de Paris. So happy about that. And then I will also be revealing the spring tiny treasures kit as well as the finish on, well, the FFO on chocolate hearts. I hope the shaker box idea turns out well because I really like the idea of making that into a sewing box. I think that'd be great. And then I hope to have plenty of other whip progress to share with you, whether that is little berry thief. There will definitely be Brita Mart sampler progress and honestly who knows what else. We'll see where the stitching mood takes me. I hope you have lots of great stitching ahead in the next couple of weeks. I will see you again in two weeks and until then happy stitching.